How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our another topic from data center virtualization that isn't necessarily blueprint specific, but it's something that I definitely think is important to cover. And that's gonna be a vSphere specific operation, not inside of vCenter, where we're gonna take a VM that's currently residing on one host on host local storage. We're gonna take that storage and we're going to do a move from local storage to shared storage. And once that storage is copied, and it's going to take a while to do that. It definitely isn't something that happens like that. I wish it did. But once the hard drive or the VMDK file is copied from local storage to shared storage, we then have the option of taking that VM, powering it off, and then we can unregister it from one host and then re-register it to another host. And this will allow us to do what they refer to as a poor man's storage vMotion and compute vMotion. So... In vCenter, it's easy because then you just right click and then do, do move your storage that way where we're doing it kind of the old school hard way and you have to do all the manual clicks yourself, but it's accomplishing the same goal just outside of vCenter. I ran into some problems later in the lab when I couldn't, when I was able to finally get the VM to flip over. The, the problem I ran into was the networking have pieces of it failed. I couldn't get an IP address. So I actually removed a lot of the uh, video that was me troubleshooting the problem because I eventually just gave up on it. The other piece that we're going to talk about is going to be doing an export where you take a VM and you export it as an OVF or a folder of files. It's a open virtualization folder or framework. And what you basically do with that is you take a working VM, you know, maybe you took and deployed Windows Server or whatever it might be and you go ahead and you export it as an OVF file. The cool thing about that is, is it's going to be a couple different files. You're going to have the OVF, which is basically the configuration details of the actual VM itself. You're going to have the manifest file, which is the MD5 thumbprint or the, uh, the hashing of that, the, the thumbprint or the signature of that file. And then you're going to have the actual VMDK, the, 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 the hard drive. And what you can do is you can download the or, or export the OVF from the host once you've got it done. I've done this a couple times in production a long time ago when I didn't have the luxury of vCenter server. And even with vCenter server, it wouldn't necessarily have been able to be done because unless the storage between where you are and where you're trying to go are synchronized and stuff like that, it's rather difficult to try to do any type of vMotion when not, not everything is set up the way that it should be. So you can do some stuff that'll make you get, you'll be able to get away with it. But at the end of the day, the idea is when you go to move a resource from one host to another and you're not really set up to do that, exporting is pretty much the only other way to do that. So you were gonna, they export the VM. I'll show you how to do it in the video. I just don't follow through with it because it just takes forever because then you literally have to download the entire VM. So the, all this information plus the VMDK. And on a Windows box, you're looking at around 15 to 20 gigs. And I didn't really feel like downloading that large of a file. But if you need to, you have to. I did it once before, twice maybe, if I remember correctly. And I had an external hard drive. I literally drove the hard drive from where I was at down into the Chicagoland area, plugged it into the host, did the export to the, the, to the external hard drive. And then I it took overnight to do it. So um, I did that. And then once that was done, I was able to drive back up to the Milwaukee area and plug that external hard drive into the new ESXi host and do the import or to deploy the OVF template and got it up and running. There was a little, some hiccups with networking and stuff like that that I had to work through, but then I was able to have it local to where the location I was at and not have to jump over a VPN or deal with any of that type of stuff. So just some cool capabilities that are available to you. I'm recording this video because I feel like it's important for you guys to see that side of the house because not every environment is going to have vCenter deployed. So if you don't know how these things work, it's important. it might come in handy for somebody that might actually need to use it. So hopefully this will help somebody that needs it. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual deployment. In this video, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of not common administration on our ESXi host. This is something that I've had to do a number of times in much smaller environments where you've only got a couple of ESXi hosts. So here I've got Linux VM1, right? This guy's a very small VM. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to power him off. Power MSA 
power off. Yes. That's going to bring the VM down. Now, what I'm going to do once he's powered off and he's good to go is I'm going to move his hard drive from the onboard storage, so the actual on box, the directly attached storage that there is. And I'm going to move his hard drive through the data store copy capability from the directly attached storage to iSCSI storage. So I'm going to hopefully he'll will be done here soon. And it looks like he's still working on getting that done. Let's go back over here to virtual machines. Okay. So this guy right here is it looks like it's still working on it. That's uh, I don't know if you can tell the little dotted little dots there instead of left of them the hand it's showing up. So let me go down here to storage and let me click on vert host one HD one. Click on that. And we're gonna go to data store browser. So here we have Linux Linux VM one. What I can do is I can right click here and say move. And it's like, okay, where do you want to move it? We're going to move it to the SAN. Select destination for vert host. I'm going to go ahead and click on the SAN drive. Click on move. Now, if it will work, I'm going to go ahead and click on close. And what you'll see down here in the lower right hand corner, you'll see how this right here is going to move. That's going to take a while to do this. This will not move very quickly. And if you're curious how big of a storage is this, if you were to go back in here to data store browser, and click on Linux VM1, we can see that the file size is, it says it's 16 gigs. So this is going to take a while to copy over, and we're at 1%. Now, once we are done copying the file from, or I should say moving the file from this hard drive over to the SAN, what we'll be able to do is then I will be able to unregister VM1-Linux from vert host 1 and move it over here to vert host 2 and the virtual machines will climb from 0 to 1 so this is going to take some time this won't happen lickety split so just be aware of some things like this this is something that you can do but it's a time consuming process now if I was to come over here to storage and look at the SAN and look at the data store browser we can see that it is being moved and we are, we look at the VMDK, 378 megs has been copied. If we refresh that number, that should increase 409. So it is copying the files. But as you can see, it's going to take, it's going to take a while. There's another way that you can do this. You can take a VM, you can click on this guy. You can actually go, you can right click on it. And you have the ability of doing what they call an export. Now, an export is very, very similar to what we're doing. Let's say click on export. We're not going to run through the process, but the idea is it's going to try to export the VM. And the idea would be to export it as, and let me go ahead and cancel the export. Just so if I was to right click here, we're not going to be able to export this one because the, the VM is powered on. So let me go ahead. If I was to do this, what would end up happening basically is you would need to first power the VM down. So you would power the VM down and then let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's go ahead and power and for the guest OS we're going to say shut down. So VMware Tools is going to reach into the Windows operating system and it's going to gracefully shut down the, the OS. So that'll make it a little less resource intensive for us on all that good stuff. So now that the VM is shut down. Let's go ahead and refresh. We can see that this host is now down. If we were to right click here, we can say export Windows. So now it says you're about to download one of three files for this virtual machine. This file is 9.43k. Please ensure that you allow pop ups from this host IP or FQDN. I'm going to say OK. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to say, how do you want to download the file? So I'm going to scoot this over. Now we have another one. There, This file right here is a much larger one. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to download, this is the OVF file 
right? So you'd have the OVF file is going to have some basic information in it with all the details of the actual VM itself. Then the other two files, one is going to be the VMDK file, and another one is going to be the manifest file. So if I go ahead and click cancel, and click cancel on this, and then come over here to the hard drive, and go to data store browser, and click on Win VM 2 you're going to have the OVF file, which is basically this. This is going to be your OVF file. You're going to have the VMDK file, and you're going to have the the uh, management file. I don't see the manifest file in here at the moment. But that's okay. You would export the files. Uh, VMware would do it for you, obviously. Export the files that are going to be needed in order for you to go about taking the VM out of ESXi. So if you wanted to move, let's say you've got one data center that this VM is deployed in, and there is no way for you to copy or move that VM from data store uh, DC1 to DC2. The easiest way to do that would be to actually export the VM and physically move it. So I've actually had to do this in the past. I had a, a VM that was down in Chicago that needed to get moved from Chicago up to Milwaukee. So I went down to Chicago. I exported the VM from the virtual environment. It took a while to do it because the hard drive was actually pretty big. It was a couple hundred gigs in size. I exported it. Then I drove up to Milwaukee where the customer's other location was. And I plugged the hard drive that I had offloaded this VM to. It was an external hard drive. And I plugged it into the back of the ESXi host. And I went ahead and I imported it. So I went ahead and did a, an export. And it took several hours to copy the file from the hard drive onto the ESXi host. Took a little bit for it to copy over. And then once it was fully copied, then we were able to start working with the, the VM up in Milwaukee. There are much, much cleaner ways of doing this. One way that you can actually do this is what they refer to as VMware Site Recovery Manager, or SRM, where you can actually take a VM and copy it from the data center that it's at to another data center using SRM. And you can use SRM to do th th those type of things as in like a backup or something along those lines. So just some things to think about when you're playing around with the technologies. We're going to be taking a look at that down the road. Let's go ahead and see where the VMDK file is. We're at 2.2 gigs. It's going to obviously take a while for this to finish. We're at, I believe it says 13%. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and pause while this is this process is working. And then after it's complete, we'll take a look at deploying the VM on another ESXi host and going from there. All right, so we can see that the VM has now been copied over, which is what we wanted to see. All 16 gigs has been moved, and it's on the storage area network, which is what we want to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on here. Actually, let me go to uh, click close on this. I'm going to right-click on here to the VM itself. Go down here to unregister. So I'm going to unregister it. It says, are you sure you want to unregister the following virtual machine? Yes, I do. Click on yes. So now the VM will disappear from ESXi host one or vert host one. I'm gonna come over here to this guy, log in on vert host two. And then I will show you how to register a VM. It's actually very, very simple to do. So as soon as VMware logs in. So we are now logged in. There's a couple ways that you can do this. You can go down here to the storage area network you can go to register a VM, come down here to VM and then and grab the file like that and click on register. There's that way now. And if we go to virtual machines, voila, VM1 Linux is here. So now I'll be able to go ahead and power this guy on. Go ahead and let it boot up. I'm going to come back over here to vert host one. I'm going to go to Windows 2. And I'm going to power him on. So now they're both being powered on. They're both running on the same storage. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, the storage is on VM host 
VM to Windows. I'm going to show you guys how to, to move that VM another way with what they call storage vMotion once we get our vCenter server deployed. But this is one of the things. Now we're getting the question of did you copy it or did you move it? We actually moved it. If you don't know, click on say I copied it. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that. It's going to go ahead and boot the VM now. And once it boots up and we have the VM, both VMs up and running, we'll be able to ping back and forth between the environments. So we're going to just wait for the Linux environment to spin up. I'm actually going to click inside of this guy and the VM, it should automatically log me in upon a boot up. So we'll see how that plays out here in just a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and pause until the VM is booted and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and log into the VM real quick. And then I will be able to do a couple ping tests. So I'm going to right click here, go to terminal. And if I do an IF config, I have an IP address of, I don't have an IP address. <laughs> so let me just make sure that the connectivity is correct. Oh, see, it's disconnected. You see that right there? I'm actually glad that happened. So if I go to actions, and I go down here to edit settings, we need to make sure that we actually associate the NIC correctly. So it's looking for the port group, but it doesn't exist. That's what the problem is. I don't know if you caught that error, but it says that it doesn't see the port group. So I'm going to go ahead and actually close this guy out. I'm going to come over here to networking. And I'm going to go ahead and create a vSwitch called data. If we come over here, we click on the networking tab. We're going to have the vSwitch called data vSwitch, right? If we look at the uplink, we can see that there's an uplink associated to it. If we look at the physical NICs, we can see that it's associated. We're looking at VMNIC 4 is what the one we're looking at because 0 and 1 are going to be management. 2 and 3 are going to be iSCSI for storage. 4 is data. 5 is going to be vMotion. And 6 will be fault tolerance. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go ahead and on the virtual switches, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to add this guy. I'm going to come in here and call this the data dash v switch. And I'm going to choose BM Nick. I'm going to say four. Click on add. And then I'm going to go to port groups. I'm going to add a port group. I'm going to go ahead and call this guy Saint, or, uh, data. V switch is going to be the data v switch. Click on add. And there we go. So now that we've got that done, I should be able to come back over here to my VM, go to the Edit Settings tab, and then from, sometimes you can tell based off of this output over here, but in the network adapter, we're going to choose Data. Click on, and I'm going to disconnect the host device from the DVD drive. We don't need that right now. So now it's disconnected, and now it should be reconnected. So I'm going to click back inside of that. So that's really what I wanted to show you guys. Until next time, thanks for so much for stopping by and hanging out with me, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.